love pasta dishes but have absolutely no clue where to start when making homemade fresh pasta well i'm going to show you how easy it is from start to finish to make a delicious homemade pasta dough what is going down my comies it's your boy chef billy parisi here and you know we believe homemade food from scratch just tastes better and there is nothing i mean nothing better than homemade pasta I always try to teach you those fundamental, basic cooking techniques. It's not just about the recipes. Once you learn these techniques, you can make anything. And there is nothing more fundamental than making homemade fresh pasta. The first thing we need to talk about are flours because there are a couple different kinds you can use and it's important to know the difference between each one. Zero Zero flour is simply finely ground flour from Italy, very similar to all purpose that we use here in the States. Next, semolina, which is a durum wheat and very classically used in pasta and bread making. Camu flour, which is a relative of durum wheat, awesome flavor, fantastic for pasta and bread making. And last but not least, all-purpose flour, which is widely used here in the United States. And you can absolutely use just all-purpose flour in pasta making. I would definitely advise against using just semolina or camu. Your dough will be rock hard. You're gonna be really mad at me when you're trying to roll this out. For me, I'm a traditionalist. I'm gonna be using a combination of zero zero flour and semolina, but the first thing I wanna do is measure it out on a gram scale, but do not sweat it if you don't have one, okay? Because I'm gonna provide the cut measurements below. Now go ahead and add some zero zero flour just to measure it out. Next, let's do semolina. And we're gonna go ahead and sift it because we don't want any clumps in our pasta dough. We want it to be incredibly smooth. Once it is sifted, let's go ahead and form a well using the back side of our hand in the center of that flour, mix everything around. And now we need to add some eggs. This is gonna be our main liquid source to moisturizing this flour dough. So go ahead and add some cracked eggs right to the center. A great rule of thumb here, okay? is one egg per 100 grams of flour. Now, if you're using cups, one egg per heaping three quarter cup scoop of flour. Got that? Awesome. Now using a fork, go ahead and break the yolk and begin to whisk the eggs together. Then slowly start to bring in the flour on the outside of that well using your fork until it becomes combined and you can no longer mix it with that fork. At this point, I'm switching to the apron because you know what? It's about to get messy up in here. And then I'm also gonna change out my fork for a bench knife. It's just easier to scrape everything up together to form it to that dough. I scrape all the egg off the countertop into the flour just to make sure it has tons of moisture. Then I start combining it with my hands. Now, my friends, it is time to knead the dough. I say always knead for seven to nine minutes, stop, and then knead for five to six more minutes. This stage is the single most important factor to having successful homemade pasta dough before anything else. So make sure you knead it, strengthen up those triceps, those wrists and those arms because you are going to need it. No pun intended. And then when your arms are finally weak and tired and you're cursing my name out, go ahead and wrap it up in plastic wrap. We want to let it chill because we just worked this dough crazily. It's going in the fridge for about 30 minutes. So go hang out during this time and then we're going to take it back out. And in the middle of doing this, just know this homemade pasta is going to be infinitely better than the store-bought pre-made pasta. You know the ingredients you put in it, and it only takes an hour to make, one hour to make homemade pasta. That's amazing. You can absolutely do this. It's so much simpler than you thought. Pasta's been chilling. Let's bring it right outside of the fridge. Looks gorgeous. We're just gonna simply remove the plastic wrap. And at this point, what I like to do is cut it into thirds using my bench knife. And now we're gonna set up our pasta rolling machine. Next, simply mount your pasta machine right to the countertop. There's sort of a little clamp on the bottom that you'll screw in to tighten it down. Then you simply put in the crank. We are gonna set our dial to the widest setting, which for my case is zero. Now we're gonna sort of 
flatten out the dough using our hands, flour it up just a little bit, and then start to run it through on that wide setting. What I do is run it through three times. I don't turn and fold over the dough three times like I've seen before. I just run it through flat like that and long three times. And at this point, you might be thinking, man, this dough is really long. Go ahead and cut it in half at this point. We don't want some crazy 20 foot long pasta dough. Now set your dial to three. We're now gonna run each of those rolled out doughs three times. And at this point, we're going to that final stage, which for me is on setting six, should be nice and thin. We're gonna roll it through only twice. You're gonna see how long this pasta is going to get. It's beautiful, it looks amazing, and it's so therapeutic and fun to do. Once it's rolled out, simply dust a clean surface with flour, place the rolled out dough right over top, give it another dust, and then repeat it until all the dough has been used. The dough is covering most of my countertop, but now we're gonna cut it into 12 to 14 inch pieces because that's how long we want our pasta to be. If you want some crazy Lady in the Tramp 36 inch pasta or even four inch pasta, whatever you want, cut it to that desired length because that's what we're gonna run through when we put in that noodle attachment. So using your bench knife, go ahead and cut it up. And I love spaghetti. I'm a huge spaghetti fan, so I'm gonna put that spaghetti attachment right on my pasta rolling machine rework the crank, and taking one of those 12 to 14 inch pieces, simply run it through the spaghetti maker. You'll see these beautiful long spaghetti noodles coming out. Love just the way this looks. It's just so awesome. Reminds me so much of my grandma making pasta in her basement in Detroit. Great experience. Then simply keep going till all of those 12 to 14 inch pieces have been used. And we do need to slightly dry out our dough. Now over drying it to me is super overrated. Like those 30 minute to 45 to 60 minute dries, to me completely unnecessary. I think you only need about 10 to 15 minutes and there's two ways to do it. If you have a pasta drying rack, you definitely don't need one. I like to put it on there if I'm going to cook it immediately, like right when I'm done making pasta. Or on the other hand, what I do is simply curl it up and roll it up and form it to a nice little pasta ball and put it on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. To me, this is way better. It's way more cost efficient. You don't need a pasta rack. It looks great. It cools and freezes well in this position. So simply do it that way. And if you want a different noodle, simply swap out the spaghetti noodle for another one that you love. I'm a huge linguine fan, so I'm gonna simply put that one on there and in the exact same process, give those 12 to 14 inch pieces a little bit of flour and then run it through that linguine noodle maker. Love linguine, looks beautiful. It's gonna be amazing, whatever pasta you make. Now that you've got all this rolled out pasta, what are you gonna do with it? You can boil it all now or you can store it. What I like to do is cover it and put it in the refrigerator. It will hold for up to three days or cover it in the freezer for up to two months. Now you know why I like those little pasta dough balls because they will fit perfectly in the freezer. And for a quick, quick minute, for those of you who don't have a pasta machine, love pasta, aren't gonna buy the machine, I'm gonna show you how we used to do it way, way back in the day. I saved one little piece of dough just for you. So on a clean surface or cutting board, what we wanna do is dust it with some flour, dust that dough with a little bit of flour, grab your trusty rolling pin, and then simply roll away, my friends. It's going to take in between four or five minutes for you to roll out this dough. It should be the same thickness as it was on setting number six when we use that machine. A really easy rule of thumb is if you hold it up and you can sort of see silhouettes and shadows through the pasta, it's thin enough, it is good enough to use. Now you don't have a noodle maker, so what the old school way of doing it is rolling up the pasta, grab your knife and cut the noodles however thick you want. If you got great knife cuts and you wanna do spaghetti, go ahead. I love fettuccine, so I'm gonna do a little bit thicker noodle, slice it all the way down that rolled up pasta dough roll. And then at the very end, just simply mix it all together, toss it so any of those folded over pieces don't get stuck together. And there you go, handmade, homemade, rolled out pasta dough just for you, my friends.
This pasta looks absolutely gorgeous. There is nothing like homemade fresh pasta. I promise you this. Now put your skills to the test and go make my fettuccine with Alfredo sauce or take a stab at my lasagna bolognese. You'll absolutely love it. We'll catch you on the next video.